Could Obama use a natural disaster to claim a third term as president? Recently, there has been a lot of talk about an imminent disaster that could happen. Two months ago, it was Yellowstone. And just after that, everybody was worried about Mount St. Helen. And then the big news was the epic hurricane season that we would see this summer. And now, all the attention is focused on the Cascadia subduction zone and the threat of a 9.0 earthquake that could affect millions of people along the West Coast. It's as though the government is cluing us in that a huge natural disaster is going to happen at any moment, and it could be anything, and we should be prepared. Why are they doing this? Obama and FEMA officials have spoken out now on several occasions. People need to be ready for a cataclysm, that they should have stored food, water, and other supplies and have an escape route. Obama isn't the only leader talking about an imminent event. The Canadian government is also making preparations for a disaster. British Columbia has spent millions of dollars in readiness for a massive earthquake and tsunami. British Columbia's emergency preparedness minister says it's not a matter of whether an earthquake will hit the West Coast or not. It's a matter of when it will hit. Students in Alberta were told last month that they should be prepared for a climate disaster. A somewhat unusual warning to a region located closer to the center of Canada's mainland, not near a body of water. Looking at the U.S.'s West Coast, Washington State Governor Jay Inslee has recently started preparing emergency services in a state. He cites that it's not a matter of if, but when, for the Cascadian earthquake to happen. California has already made preparations in April and May and is participating in a major drill taking place from June 7th through the 10th called Cascadia Rising. This involves the states of Washington, Oregon, and California and is backed by FEMA. It simulates a 9.0 earthquake and the potential for a tsunami. Oregon Governor Kate Brown and California Governor Jerry Brown have both invested heavily in earthquake disaster response and preparation. They've been vocal about the need to prepare for a huge coming earthquake and how one can stay safe during such an event. Additionally, several mainstream media publications have pushed people in the U.S. and Canada to prepare now for a climate disaster devastation. It's not a matter of if, but when for us. And today, thousands of first responders held a massive drill to make sure that they know what to do when that big one strikes. 9.0 magnitude earthquake and tsunami hits. In fact, the Oregon Office of Emergency Management says it'll affect more than 15 million people in our area. 5,000 of them will die, and more than a million of them will be in need of food, an issue Governor Kate Brown addressed this morning. And their homes should be stocked with food, water and critical items to help them sustain extended periods of time without electricity or plumbing. Total chaos that can happen at any moment. Why are they doing this? Why do they keep issuing these warnings about imminent climate threats? We've also seen companies in Canada and the U.S. who are now pouring millions of dollars into disaster response including AT&T, who will invest $600 million so that customers can maintain communication during a disaster. Additionally, there are several other states located in the center of the U.S. that will carry out major disaster response exercises, including Tennessee. According to the article you see on the screen, Tennessee will carry out one of the largest exercises in the history of the state. Is it just me, or does it seem like there's a lot of preparation for a climate cataclysm that is coming? whatever it might be, whether it's Cascadia or a hurricane or something else. Is something going to come this summer, before the election? And if so, could this result in a cancellation by Barack Obama? The answer is yes. In fact, Obama can do it easily with the Declaration of Martial Law. Constitutional rights in America will be suspended in such an instance. It is hard for people in the U.S. to envision what their nation would look like under martial law. Some say it can't be done, but I beg to differ. In fact, I will play a clip of a congressional hearing from decades ago, where a discussion ensued about the suspension of the Constitution and the establishment of a provisional government during a time of national crisis. A crisis does not have to be a military invasion. It could be a natural disaster that leads to the outbreak of chaos. In this event, Obama could easily lay aside 
all amendments of the Constitution, including the 22nd, that forces term limits on the executive branch. Colonel North, in your work at the uh, NSC, were you not assigned at one time to work on plans for the continuity of government in the event of a major disaster? Mr. Chairman, I believe that question touches upon a highly sensitive and classified area, so may I request that you not touch upon that, sir? I was particularly concerned, Mr. Chairman, because I read in Miami papers and several others that there had been a plan uh, developed by that same agency, a contingency plan in the event of emergency that would suspend the American Constitution. And I was deeply concerned about it and wondered if that was the area in, in which he had worked. I believe yeah, it was. Yeah, I most, I get yeah, I most respectfully request that that matter not be touched upon at this stage. If we wish to get into this, I'm certain arrangements can be made for an executive session. And tragically, the only member who got close was Jack Brooks, and he was stopped by the chairman. But the truth of the matter is that, yes, you do have those standby provisions, and the plans are there, and the statutory uh, emergency plans are there, whereby uh, you could, in the name of uh, stopping terrorism, apprehend, invoke the military, and uh, arrest Americans and hold them in detention camps. This clip clearly shows that a top secret plan has been in place for some time that pertains to the suspension of the U.S. Constitution and the ushering in of a provisional government during a national crisis. For the naysayers, here is a congressman who was told to shut up when he questioned that such a plan was already in place. If Obama isn't going to declare martial law and establish a provisional government at some point from now until January 19, 2017, then why did Mitch McConnell fast track a bill back in January that handed Obama absolute authority? Of the US military to declare martial law anywhere in the world, including the United States? That's correct. Never before in history as a president of the US had such power over the military to declare martial law for any reason at any point in time, anywhere in the world. Martial law changes everything, even constitutional rights. You no longer have them. They're gone, including the 22nd Amendment, which limits Obama to two terms. He no longer would be forced to leave office if martial law was declared. Several individuals have spoken out publicly about the potential for an Obama third term with the eruption of a major calamity in the United States. Dr. Ben Carson warned that Obama could cancel the election under widespread anarchy, while former Congressman Ellen West declared that Obama was taking several actions to ensure that he will have a third term. Larry Nichols has spoken out about Obama's plot to keep power using a FEMA provisional government, and Democratic Senator Chris Murphy warned on the floor of the Senate back in January that Mitch McConnell's bill was handing martial authority to Barack Obama. Is working. Um, Madam President, today um, I wanted to come down to the floor to speak very briefly about a uh, resolution that the majority leader introduced, I believe, earlier today. This is an authorization for military force resolution that apparently purports to give the president legal authority to conduct military operations against ISIS. Um, before we break for the weekend, Madam President, I thought it was important to come to the floor to explain why, very briefly, to my colleagues, um, uh, excuse me, to explain what this resolution uh, really is. Um, th this resolution is a total rewrite of the War Powers Clause of the United States Constitution. Let's be clear about that. It is essentially a declaration of international martial law, a sweeping transfer of military power to the president that will allow him or her to send U.S. troops almost anywhere in the world for almost any reason with absolutely no limitations. Everything's been put in place. The stage has been set. All that's needed now is a widespread calamity 
or catastrophe, and then troops can be ushered in, and the Marshall Declaration can be made in the United States. An Obama third term scenario is really not hard to accomplish. If the Cascadia subduction zone were to blow, or any other type of natural disaster, such an event could easily cause enough chaos, looting and rioting, for Obama to declare the Marshall State. Once he does this, the 22nd Amendment goes up in smoke, and his third term is ushered in.